request to do uh, All the Things You Are, and I think I've put up some stuff about this. I know I've played it a little bit. I think I put up a real short video a few years ago, just kind of goofing around before a gig, I think. I just played it. But uh, I'll do it again, and let me dig up the chart. Not that I need it, because I know this song pretty well. I need to know the alphabet to find these things. Here it is. Um, and this is, a, this is a great song to study your basic open voicing chord formulas, okay? And uh, I'll put those in the description down there. Uh, all the things you are, uh, chord formulas. If it's a third on top, you, one, five, three, seven, three, and then same one here, same one here, same one here, okay? However... Right here... Actually, have the seventh on top before you hit that note, and then a D flat's got the third on top as well. And here's a seventh on top. You see, it's so easy to change from if you use these voicings, and you know you're not going to set the world on fire with these voicings, but you can you can make them richer. You know, you can start with this and and turn it into that. You know, you could do the same thing right here. If you want to, I don't want to actually, but you know, start adding some other notes from the formula. You can like, you know, you start with something that sounds good and then you mess around with it a little bit, see what else you can come up with. It's a little voicing, but I just added a couple notes. And here's G7. Uh, how about a note right close to the melody? If you're sensitive, you can do it. Okay, right here. Again, another, an, another note real close to the melody. You can do it up here. And, you know, from, from a nice open voicing, would it really be this? And one reason why you want open voicings is because there's lots of room to play around. something in, like a B minor. Yeah, like that. I thought B minor so what chord, but it's really a G major chord. Right? Now, I wonder what we could do for reharmonization here. We're on G, and we're going to A minor. Uh, let's see, we could go C. Anytime you move down chromatically, you're kind of doing this cycle of fifths. You know, because you know you could go like that, or you could go. See, you see. Nice big voicing here would be like a, a Kenny Barron voicing, all these fifths, and then you know. Um, You don't usually find a major seventh on a dominant seventh chord, you know, because of that, but, you know, it just sounds good in this song. This is the most harmonically weird section of the song. You're on E major, and you're going to try to change that into like some kind of a C chord. See, and then it gets you back to F minor. And, uh, you know, listen to some of the greats and how they handle that. It's, it's pretty nice. Uh, a good... Uh, that's, this is such a classic way, too, of uh, reharmonizing. You're going to A flat. You think a 2-5-1, but do you ever think this 2-5-1... See, because this A is a sub for the E flat going to A flat, so, you know. You can use that all over the place, too. Like, like if in your, you're in the blues, you know, and you're in E flats, for instance. To get to the four chord, all right? All right, where was I? Let's take that last uh, section here now. We got... It. 
Keith Jarrett does that too when he's like soloing. He'll go like. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> Another good one. <laughs> it was like. Uh... D flat minor seventh, that's really like a D flat minor six. And then he stays on the same chord for the C. Like that. See, because you got D flat minor six, and then C altered. All right, he substituted a dominant chord there for that C minor chord. And then, you know, you're going to B flat, so you could do a quick B to E. All right, so the last three lines again, Keith Jarrett style, slowly. Uh. One really cool thing about the way Keith Jarrett plays is, uh, I don't know how I got onto Keith Jarrett all of a sudden, but um, his rhythm is pretty complex, you know. I mean, when you hear me play, I'm just be da 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 do ba do ba do, you know, same old stuff. But uh, you know, he's able to kind of start in odd places and end in odd places. Um, uh, let me just try a little bit on the first A section. <laughs> It's, it's like when you're listening to him, sometimes it's you're listening to his phrases and you're so used to people like starting and stopping phrases kind of in a, in a more conventional way. And it's easy to kind of lose your place in the song when you listen to him, uh, and, unless you really have a strong sense of, you know, where the song is. So uh, let me see if I can lose you on this. So one, two, on, two, three. So a lot of times I was like playing the chord early and, uh, you know, definitely trying not to be uh, very, you know, two bar phrase, two bar phrase, that kind of thing. Now let me go to the opposite extreme and just like do two bar phrases. <laughs> Four bar phrase that time. Two bars now. Uh, one thing I can do usually, uh, even if I haven't played any jazz for like a year practically, is, uh, you know, do a decent kind of open voicing uh, rubato kind of rendition of the song. So I'll do that for you now.
Well, that'll do it for me uh, for today, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in, as always, and I'll see you again soon.